Hey, so uh, welcome back to part two of this conversation that I had with uh, best-selling author Brie and costume expert Pez, uh, breaking down the um, the behind-the-scenes clip that was released at Comic Con from season two of of the Wheel of Time. Uh, this is once again is us just <laughs> over analyzing and uh, really just getting into the weeds, but having a lot of fun talking about uh, this behind-the-scenes clip and breaking it down and talking about our theories. Um, once again, spoilers pretty much to the end of the book series. So, uh, I, I, it might actually just be the gathering storm, but I, just to be safe, I'm going to say the end of the, the book series. So if you have not finished season one of the Wheel of Time, why are you watching this? And if you have not finished the book series, I don't think this is a safe video for you to watch. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, with that out of the way, let's uh, let's get into it. Let's be nerdy, 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 let's be I don't think that's the white cloaks. Uh, I think that's Born Hall in the back. I really yeah, do. There is, yes, there is a white cloak in the back. I don't. These yeah. might not be, but that's definitely him. I there. think they're either um that. from Karain. I can't pronounce it. Where Moraine is from? Yes, thank you. Karen. Or Tear. Mm-hmm. And then we also have white cloaks there too. Like the the one here, that's obviously a white cloak. Um, here yeah. on the the right under the microphone. Yeah. Um, but then we yes. have Sean Chen, and then we have people who don't match either aesthetic. If you yeah, zoom in on this guy three. here, um, I, I don't know why I'm pointing. I have no arms. <laughs> I know. Well, we do. We just can't move them. Is, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Zoom in on him. Um, somebody had pointed this out earlier. And like the first thing I thought seeing these like vertical slashes is mm-hmm. I did think um, Kyren and like Kyrie, the... Yeah the the slashes on the clothing though apparently after some book <laughs> discussion this morning someone told us those were supposed to be horizontal and has I was an I was like emotional I was about, breakdown I was a, I was about to say oh I was about to say that I was gonna say I normally ignore costume descriptions but they keep talking about the horizontal slashes they say it so many times so, so the, the, the whole thing it, it's called dagging and slashing Mm-hmm. And it, it is a genuine form of clothing and textile decoration from the medieval period into the Renaissance. Oh. And it only works because you have to cut things in a specific direction for the integrity of the fabric because of the warp and the weft yarns that you use when you're weaving. And if you do it horizontally, it won't work. Ah, okay. <laughs> and that's why I had a meltdown this morning. On I had an emotional, <laughs> emotional breakdown over Kyrian's horizontal slashes so when you when you weave something i mean since the wheel of time has a lot of weaving in it um the the Mm -hmm. yarns have to be oriented in two directions generally speaking there's more than two directions that you can do but warp yarns are the long or vertical yarns um and then the weft is what you weave in from the side okay and so if they're doing horizontal slashes they could be cutting the fabric in the wrong direction or orienting the fabric in the wrong direction from when you sew things to give things strength um and and so then i like pounded my head into my desk for a little bit yes (laughs) i I understand (laughs) i'm not entirely convinced that these guys can't also be white cloaks they could be because yeah. they've got some silver arm. He's got some silver arm stuff there. Yeah. I mean, they there do. could be some weird stripe situation going on. I don't know. They 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 love their fashion, those white cloaks. Yeah. Well, and but it, when... it does look like three distinct groups, though, to me. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes me think Falma. Because in Falma, there's yeah. like a mess, a big mess that happens. Nobody knows who's well, fighting. That, who. That's why I wondered if Also, Loyal Tyrant. over there? Yes. yes. Loyal's a bit, Yeah. I just hope that here. we see him just like standing on the edge of the battle, scribbling frantically. <laughs> like that would just be so good. I was about to say that he's like got a pen. Hold still. I'm trying to write this down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly wondered if the the two combatants that we see in the middle who aren't ambiguous. Yeah. Um, I honestly wondered if they were meant to be from Tear because the era that we see the slashing and the dagging in clothing 
overlaps a lot with the influence of Spain in the Renaissance. Oh, yeah. okay. And Tyr has a strong Spanish influence on the dress of the aristocrats from some of the behind the scenes materials and things that they've let out. And so that made me think, that could maybe be people that Rand brought with him from Tyr if he's gone from to the Tyr. stone. Right. And but then his way to Falma. Yeah. I, I don't know that for sure. I mean, I'm just guessing. And the problem is like some of the things that Robert Jordan chose as this is the signifier of this country's dress um, that are maybe being incorporated into the show, we don't know, are mm -hmm. also like the characteristic of that time period or location yeah. is being used elsewhere and so uh good luck to the costume designers <laughs> yeah all right while we're talking about here i'm gonna open this one up well i don't know that i need to even look at this because it's right behind you brie i'm thinking this has to be tier oh so i, I have been, been wrong yeah. i have been doing like mental math in my head trying to make our various parties link up and i assume that leandrin is still going to bring some girls to you know the general yes, area yeah. of balm mm -hmm. um i believe judging by what we've got going on in this teaser my current theory is that moraine and lan and rand are gonna set kyrian on fire or something yeah and yeah. then take the way gate in her cousin's house over to mm -hmm. Palm. Okay. Didn't and Rand so, actually set the city on fire? Or I did. Rand books. I mean, he didn't actually set the city on fire, but Rand went to uh, Kyrian, and when he left, it was on fire. Like, I, I, just, I believe that's a thing that Rand is he, going to. It was a yeah, it was a Taviran thing where he just walked in <laughs> and everything just went. Bleh! And the whole city was in like yes. civil war. Because like, that was the first time we books. saw Aludra, right? Because there were yes. fireworks and they all yeah. exploded, and yeah, yeah. But he like he also just like he left a civil war in his wake. <laughs> like it's yeah, just you know. So I think yeah. that whatever this is must be how the people chasing the horn are going to get there. What my brain, because I have my priorities when, you know, thinking about the show. Uh, my priority is how do I get uh, Moraine and Swan back together? Yeah. <laughs> so that was my concern. And then this location just looked a little bit tropical. Well, not a little bit, quite tropical. Oh, yeah. And that reminded me of what we saw of Tyr. And yeah. so now Swan isn't in Tyr. But, but she's from Tyr. She's from Tyr. So in my mind, I was like, oh, that's good. Because Moraine can't go back to Tarvalin unless Swan calls her. And she won't know if Swan's called. Like, it's a very, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So right. I saw this and thought, I, I can't figure it out. I hope she exactly. threw the booty call painting in her bag. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Take that with her. But this, like this, I was thinking this might be a way to get them in the same place somehow. I love the way that it looks. It, it just. There's so much here, even though there's no characters here that we can see. Yeah. yeah it is. I mean, that's, I'm assuming why, Brie, you chose it as your background. I just <laughs> love hanging out on Waygate because the Tweeter of Chaos has won me over. He really has, it's but it could open the up and there could be, Machin Shin could just like be behind you. Okay, you well, know. I don't love that. <laughs> <laughs> just come yelling your anxieties at you. <laughs> we were talking about Sean Chen, so let's. I don't know. We cannot confirm that this is Sean Chan, but come on. This has to be Sean Chan, uh, right? I, you know what? I don't know. I, I have been going back and forth on this thing ever since somebody started throwing it at me. And I think I've had like three or four discords at this point where people are like, Pez! <laughs> With this specific <laughs> shot. So it could be Sean Chan. And the thing that makes me think it's Sean Chan is the curved piece around her jaw, because that yep. could be meant to be evocative of mandibles. It could be meant to be evocative of tusks mm -hmm. on, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I keep thinking it says subreddit, but. Uh, uh, thread, thread it, thread it. Thread it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that keeps throwing me is this shoulder piece that looks like a rib cage. Ah. Now, the Sean should have no problem dressing skeletally. We saw skeletal helmets mm -hmm. in the end of season one, so yeah. it could still be Sean Chen, but there's also the Forsaken, and running around with gold bones on is a big Forsaken move. Right, okay. 
And then I was also like convinced that these circles that are printed or stamped into the, the gold piece along the jaw were maybe meant to be moons. And so I was thinking landfair. Oh, uh, okay. Now, the, the, most I people talked to myself this. out of it. <laughs> I, I mean, say, I can't, I can't see landfair covering her face. I most really can't see landfair covering Most people think that this is Karima McAdams or whatever her name is, the actress who we know has been cast but we do mm-hmm. not know as whom. And like land fear has been a very, very popular. We can't right. 100% tell if it's her, but like that has been the theory. So like mm. the land fear thing has a lot of fans. Um, sure. But like, I'm still on the same thing. Unless there were, we're talking some age of legends fashion. She did just not seem like a girl who's like hiding Hiding her that face. hottie make hottie pants face. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I don't and, think it would some, be something she would choose to do necessarily, mm-hmm. but she might do it to deceive Rand, like if she's supposed to look like she's being tormented. Right. I, I will I, say, I, um, people have theorized that she's going to eat up Semraj's Sean Chan plot, and you know, oh. I mean, I guess maybe if she was, you know, I could see that. Okay. But I, I feel like following two on around is not what she wants to do with her free time. No, no. What if de- Lanfear like, takes Suroth's place? That's but that is a uh, oh takes Suroth's place. I was thinking, oh, it could be. I I think that Samarag is going to be in the show because we saw her in yeah. the Idols. We saw her in the yeah. Idols. Yeah, yeah. So. This honestly, this one confuses me. I've seen people discussing like, oh, could it be a voice? Because you know everything mm-hmm. has been diminished other oh, than the yeah, mouth. Yeah, the voice. Yeah, and, the voice. and I could absolutely buy that argument, but I just there's not enough here for me to make a mm-hmm. a really good guess that I'm confident in. I I mean, my guess would be yeah. Sean Chen. But I definitely think Sean Chen. I will say, I thought these were suckers, like yeah. that an octopus has. That was oh, my first yeah. thought too. So I was thinking like Kraken, um, mm-hmm. Aegeanen, like Chip which Captain. made me think, yeah, made me think of Aegeanen, which makes because Aegeanen is my favorite like B or C list character. I love her, so I very much yeah. want her in the show. Well, and this would be such an interesting and striking appearance for her to have. Like I've kind of been assuming we're going to meet her when she boards um, the captain's ship, and mm-hmm. that that's also how we're going to meet him. Yeah. Um, so this could be that. I there's just so much going on with this one little glimpse of yeah. something. But yeah, I mean it's gore- This is this is another one of those cool. costumes where I go. This will show up at conventions. Oh like, yeah, yeah. This has to show up at conventions because it's stunning. It's, like, I mean, I even it's let, like intriguing. Her, her eyes coming through the holes there. It's so cool. But yeah, I think it. I, I think it has to be Sean Chan because of the mandibles as well. But, uh, yeah. Okay. That's my instinct, but I'm afraid that like I'll say, oh yeah, it's Sean Chen, and then we're gonna get like sixty thousand people tweeting at us later. Oh, that wasn't Sean Chen. <laughs> come at people, me, tweet at me. Come at me, seriously. <laughs> so try to keep things in theme. I know this is not the order of the video, but this is I'm I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is these are Sean Chen. They are. Yes. We murder boarded them. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah oh, good, the, okay. I did find, if you look at the logo, logos, <laughs> the sigils yes. on the banners and stuff, um, hi, Lord, oh my God, this is the sixth time Turok? today I've said, what's his face? Turok, yes. Yeah. Um, he's got a, a sort of golden bird situation mm-hmm. going on. Okay. Um, on blue. And on that's the okay. banners appear. Yeah. yeah. And also, if you look at the man in the center of the ring he appears to be bald which is yeah, a significant a, uh thing yeah oh yeah. wait they've got some stripy skirt situation yep. things going on so they maybe they absolutely do they absolutely do yes i i just love his this okay what my brain looks at this and goes egypt I don't know. Yes, <laughs> I don't. That, yes. that was okay. my guess as well initially. Um, I also see some like Chinese influences, which would also fit with some of the things that they've said about Shanshan design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, between the this desert setting and and the color tone, I immediately went with Egyptian. Plus, there's a lot of gold. Yeah, um, yeah, which yeah, yeah. 
I, it honestly, when I first saw this, before I was able to like zoom in on it and everything, I was wondering if this was meant to be Shara and a very specific mm. Forsaken, and if we yeah. were gonna like glimpse them. And I also love the way that they're kind of arrayed like the ancient Aes Sedai symbol. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yep, there it is. Come on, <laughs> that is so cool. It could be Seraph. Mm -hmm. I feel like Suroth would be wearing something fancier. Yeah. And we There's still are going sure on with the head, front. but I can't figure out. It I looks know. like some of the. There's some really intricate, like, court hairstyles from yeah. China. Mm -hmm. And it made me think of that, maybe. Um, but that's not something I'm a super those boots, familiar person with. <laughs> the guy in the front, those boots. I'm just, I'm, so, I'm feeling Pat and Fane here. Here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the way he's standing kind of has a pad and fa like pad and fane has pad such and fane a... has tight pants and those like pokey boots. <laughs> yeah, but also the way the actor stands. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I feel like I could recognize him no matter what he was wearing. Like, I mean, I could be completely wrong that that's him there, but like, well, wouldn't the other strong him... possibility with this group of characters be Bale? Bale Domon. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that is the other possibility. I'm more inclined to believe it's Pad and Fane than anybody else, but mm. it's honestly yeah. the boots for me. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I can't even remember what his boots look like, but I feel like they look like that. <laughs> yeah. it, the body uh, the carriage makes me yeah. believe 100% that it's him. I just yeah. like to throw out lots of possibilities because I'm contrary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the body carry like that's the proper terms. You use better words than me. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, the way he carries himself does look like that like i that's something he's, he's the only person in this world who looks like he's chilling yes <laughs> he always yes. looks like he's just, just chilling just like totally relaxed totally cool and okay so while we're on fame then again this yeah like him, for sure straight yeah. back straight back totally yeah proud his shoulders are thrown back he's just like yeah strolling yes strolling is the word like meandering almost he's just he's, he's happily sauntering yeah yes Always, he's always. Not he's got concerned. such swagger. And this does not look like the architecture that we saw inside of the fort at the end of season one to me. I, I you don't, don't think, think so? I, I thought it was at first, but I don't think that these column designs are right. I'm going to have to go back and look. The, the, the hmm, chandelier things threw me off a little. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I, it, I don't... It could be. It absolutely could be. I just... I don't know. The lamps on the side, I'm just remembering from that scene where Amelisa yes. lights them. It, the, are they right? Are they the same? They, they I, look very similar to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just, there's something about the light in this scene and something about the shape of the columns. I'm going to have to go back and watch because I'm just not sure. But yeah, okay. I'm definitely overanalyzing that. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're here for. We're that's here to overanalyze stuff. That's true. <laughs> So, uh, a pad okay. thing could be strolling. Maybe that's North Harbor. Oh, uh, North Harbor, where he's like there to, to meet with. Landon. I don't really want to think about Pat and Fane in North Harbor, but no, especially with <laughs> says, <laughs> Yes, there he is. Okay, like I mean, I've got you here, Pez. I'm just looking at the costumes for some reason because that's, I love you know, this. So Devin. he has gone darker, like. His, his clothes are more distressed than they were in season one. I think it's the same mm. coat, but so too, he's yeah. falling into shadow just like Matt was in season mm. one because they were doing the same sort of thing with Matt where his yeah. clothes were getting successively darker and, and grungier. And look at how much his hair has grown out and his facial hair. Like this is not the same Pat and Fane no. that we saw at the end of season one to me. He's uh had some stuff happen. I I don't I don't think the show Pat and Fane is gonna like be traveling in a cook pot. But I mean, if he is still traveling with Murdral and Trollocs, he's not gonna be having a fun time, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think about him in connection with the door draw. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Cause he like he, I, the fact that there's a door draw in the show because like the, in the in the books, um, 
he looks like he's in charge when he leaves. Like he's right. the head and then the murderer are following him. But the fact that there's a door draw in the show means that at some point he had a uh, battle with the, the murderer. Like the murderer yeah. tried to take charge and he asserted his authority, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So that it's- could be what's happening here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the same clothes. It could just be things of a similar cut, but it it really reminds me of the jacket that he was wearing in season one. Oh, my baby. Mm. Oh, <sighs> all grown up. Yeah, I. The reason my heart like breaks with this. Okay, uh, someone asked Rafe in the Q and A what to like name a scene that you really like with just naming two characters or something like that, and he said Egwene Rena. And I look at this. Oh. She's got bags. her bucket, so I think she's cleaning and doing chores. But um, she's definitely oh, wearing an saying? apron. Yeah, she's uh, wearing an apron and she's okay. got a bucket. So I think she's doing chores, but 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 who's I she 100% looking at? Think. <laughs> and the the backdrop is interesting too because this is the same sort of screen and mm. pillar configuration that we saw when Moraine was looking out over the edge. Yeah of the tower so this could be a kind of isolated spot to find a young mm-hmm. novice and maybe invite them to go on a road trip yeah i'm also noticing just like it looks like they put a very minimal but ledge and i'm wondering if any of them watched my videos where i had massive anxiety attacks <laughs> about the fact that there were no ledges anywhere i said i can't make themselves fly they're all just in so, this age this is- <laughs> there is no osha <laughs> oh, this is marble. Do you know how slippery marble gets when it's wet? This is very dangerous. Well, and okay. I love seeing Egwene in this spot that feels like it's high up on the tower, yeah. looking so young and, and hopeful mm-hmm. because I can't stop thinking about the other time we see Egwene high up on the tower mm-hmm. in white and fighting uh, the Sean Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Towards the end, I was thinking. Sorry, I was thinking. Show Egwene. So I was oh. on the cl- <laughs> no. on the cliff, on the cliff, being tossed off. But yes, you're right. Yeah, this is her. This is innocent young. Like it. I, I am. I am so worried for. I know exactly what's going to happen. Like I've read the books many, many times, and I look at her face, and I just no, don't, not don't the baby, go. <laughs> don't go. Except that if she stays in the tower, she will die. So yep. she has to go. It, that looks almost like a lamp or or something, maybe. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm curious yeah. to see what she's up to. I, I suspect we will see her doing chores, but I mean, chores makes a lot of sense because that definitely is an apron. It mm-hmm. absolutely is, and it's got a pocket. Yeah. When I first looked at this, this is obvious. Like this is so completely wrong. But I went, does she have the horn of Valir in her back? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. She not it up on her way out of town. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, I, I think it's Falm. I think, I think they're demonic, but yeah. like, I don't know exactly what to think about what's going on. I, I, I'm yeah. not sure this is a shot because I think there's a lot of people. Like the person in red. Well, there's yeah, a cooler. <laughs> like, there's if you cooler? zoom out, there's a oh, cooler. Oh yeah, there's a <laughs> yeah. cooler. Yes. So and I don't think it's a shot. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is obviously a crew person, and I, when I first saw these, like, on the Dusty Wheel, but obviously we're dealing with things being layered and layered as far as resolution. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, that's Egwene. But when I got, had the picture myself and was zooming in, oh, that's not Egwene. No. Neither I don't think that either of them are Egwene, but I think it would be yeah. sensible if we considered these two pairings of people who are standing very close together, mm-hmm. and then think about that final shot of yeah. season one this to me looks like they are standing together being given orders they're stationed yes. in a tower um yes. ready to fight yeah okay the, i have the a money and sold on. Mm-hmm. brand new theory right now <laughs> that yeah not not about what this is for the show but about what we are actually looking at here i think this is like a setup shot because the yeah. demani are in the right clothes these two are not in the same clothes. And if they're going with the show, they should be in the same clothes. Yep. They should be in uh, a uniform. So this is them like... because there's Positioning, a blocking, yeah. something like that. Blocking. There's like a bunch of crew people over here. There's a cooler. Stand-ins. So this is a, yeah. This well, is stand-ins or if blocking. you have actors yeah. who are afraid of heights 
at all, which mm-hmm. happens. Um, yeah. You have to get them used to standing near the edge. Right, right, right. Mm. And also, if we pull out a little bit, that dome, that's the same colors that we see on those tents in the mm. scene where we thought we saw Tarak. So, right, okay. And this could easily be coastline. I mean, we've got water behind us. Yes. And... Yeah. So I, th- I think, yeah, I think that this is the setup for the Damani. I think this is supposed to be Falma. Or, yeah. you know, it's a tower that's built in the middle of nowhere. Like, it's, this is obviously, I, I think it's obviously meant to mm-hmm. be filmed so it looks like it's much taller than it is. I suspect so, especially because we've got that big crane. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. There is one more part coming, uh, which I guess I will release tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about our theories? Do you have any theories of your own? Uh, the, the really cool gold masky person. I'm pretty sure that's the Shan Chan. But any other theories? Let me know. Are you a proponent of the Lanfear theory? Do you think Lanfear would cover her face? I would be very, very shocked if Lanfear covered her face. But uh, Anyway, let me know in the comments below. And if you like my content and you want to support me, I do have a Patreon. It will be linked in the description below. As I say every single time, and I mean it every single time, thank you so, so much to my patrons. You mean so much to me. You help me more than you will ever know. So thank you. And uh, with that, I am going to end this here. So please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, no, I think that's the only way I can do it. (laughs) Oh, okay. What did I push? Um, Apparently (laughs) I pushed a button. (laughs) All right. I got a new end credits thing. That was great. (laughs) 